Greetings, cyberdogs and citizens of the internet. This is Rendog coming at you from the extended wing of the storage warehouse in this Let's Play Minecraft Feed the Beast series. In the previous episode, we managed to successfully fully automate our Feru harvesting machine on the surface. And in this episode, my friends, we are going to be spending a little bit of time doing some maintenance work around the cyber labs and talking a little bit more about the freaking Renstar, namely, what in the jazz? are we going to be doing first in the Red Star? I think that's a really important question to answer, guys. And in this episode, we're going to brainstorm that a little bit and hopefully come to a conclusion at the end of this episode what exactly we're going to be doing in that very first module of the Red Star. So sit back and relax, my cyber diggity dogs. Let's feed the beast that is our mind. Now, guys, since the last time you were here in the storage warehouse, I have extended this, uh, this wing of the storage warehouse by a few more blocks because basically we were running out of space, especially for this stuff, for all of the Zycorium and uh, all the different colors of Zycorium. Basically, we have 64 stacks of all of this jazz right now in the old storage warehouse area. And uh, we basically just do not have enough space for this stuff anymore. So I needed to add a few more barrels into the storage warehouse. It's also, I, I basically, what I did was I just stuck a whole bunch of barrels into this wing. And now anything that was going into the overflow chest is now coming in here. And this wall basically gives us a good view of what materials we have like a surplus of. So we can see here we have a surplus of marble, we have a surplus of dirt, a surplus of, um, of oh, a that's a surplus of sand over there. That is actually really good news because I want to turn as much of the sand as I can into glass, actually. Uh, I think we're probably going to need quite a lot of glass for the Renstar, especially because there's going to be like really awesome and massive domes of glass uh, throughout the Renstar spaceship staring out into space. Well, that's the plan anyway. <laughs> so where, where we can smelt down some glass, I'm going to be happy to do so. But guys, before we start actually having a chat about uh, what we are doing in the Renstar today, I want to just drop off a whole bunch of stuff into the manual insertion chest over here. Get out of my freaking inventory. All of this useless jazz. I do not need you no more. There we go. We can even drop off the hoe. Um, actually, you know what? That hoe should probably go into the fairy harvester place. Uh, I think what we're going to do today, guys, is... Um, actually work on the walls of the fairy harvester while we have a chat about the Renstar. So I'm just going to sort of uh, get a whole bunch of supplies, make sure that we're ready to do that. I'll pick up a, a few stacks of oak wood over here. We're going to be using this oak wood to create uh, the walls that are going to go around uh, the fairy harvester. And I think we probably need some cobblestone also, but I, I don't think we have any cobblestone anywhere actually come to think about it yeah it, it all gets freaking recycled man unless i can find some around here uh but guys since you were last in the cyber labs i've actually done quite a lot of stuff that i kind of want to take you through today uh before we go outside because i feel that maybe maybe there's a whole bunch of stuff that i haven't really showed you guys yet so why don't we head down into the cyber labs maintenance level and why don't we fire up all of the engines for our quarries that are currently running now uh you might have be, be able to see on the mini map there in the top right hand corner that in fact there are quite a few quarries that are barren that have been actually mined out completely and that is the case my friends basically the first quarry over here is mined out um, a long time ago the second quarry is mined out a long time ago the third quarry which is over in that position I think is also mined out this quarry is also mined out as you can see um, and that quarry that we had all the way on this side is also mined out and I do believe that the other quarry is very very close to being mined out so we we have basically been been i mean this just shows you how much time i've been spending on the fairy harvester man it's been insane amounts of hours on that project uh but this this quarry over here which i think you guys have seen is almost mined out also you can see it goes all the way down to the bottom over there so what i've actually had to do is scout for some new quarries and i'm going to get uh, another two quarries up and running so this is our current quarry right this is our oldest quarry that's still running over here and what i've done is i've actually built another quarry and i've installed it in this position over there you can see a whole bunch of mobs spawning over there and that's because the uh, the quarry hasn't yet gotten rid of the the open space above over there oh my goodness that is a spawning a spawning paradise going on over there man damn check how many mobs are spawning there 
That's pretty crazy. Uh, but as you can see, that quarry is, I've powered it, I've sent some power into it via this golden conductive pipe. And the awesome thing is, the items coming out of this quarry just go directly into the sorting facility via this uh, golden transport pipe over here. So uh, that quarry is still up and running. It's probably going to take a few more, uh, probably another, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes or so before it actually starts mining out of the ground. And I've also set up another quarry. So this is going to be the first time in the series, actually, that there's going to be... Oh, come me, me and metal doors, man. <laughs> I just cannot get my fat butthole through those freaking metal doors. So, um, it's kind of annoying. And we could actually steal some cobblestone from here, right? Yeah, let, let's, let's steal some cobblestone from here. We'll, we'll let it gather for now. Uh, but, but I've set up another quarry all the way on this side also. So, we're gonna, yeah, like I said, we're going to have three quarries running simultaneously. I'm not sure if the, re the recycling facility is going to be able to handle this, but uh, time will tell. And you can see we've got the golden conductive pipe running through this wall between these two empty quarries. And this is now going into a brand new quarry area over here. Oh my goodness! No, 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 no. That's not good. Oh, and uh, look. Oh, uh, <laughs> out of jetpack feel. Awesome. Um, that wasn't a new bot. No, <laughs> that wasn't a new bot at all. Um, but guys, that is now another quarry that I've installed over there, and uh, that is just taking its sweet ass time to quarryify. Let's see, we're gonna have to try and get ourselves up here. Oh my goodness, man, that was a that was an epic new bot. Looks like my jetpack. Oh, I think I was recharging it somewhere. Um, so my bad. <laughs> Uh, but there we go guys even though there are creepers and stuff everywhere that quarry is slowly going to make itself um you can see it's already zapping away so that is our uh, th the third quarry that's going to be up and running for us which is awesome and uh hopefully that's going to be able to generate enough uh, iron blocks and metal blocks for us to build the rain star basically um i don't know i felt that two quarries running simultaneously just wasn't enough i, I think we actually need way more materials coming into the cyber labs and then then two quarries can give us so i wanted to go set up another quarry so i don't know i think i think three quarries is going to be good enough it's definitely going to put strain on our power supply though um, i'm pretty sure all of these mfes are going to get their buttholes drained completely let's see if we can find our jetpack i think it's probably in here um, yeah, there it is. So wheat. <laughs> so here's a fairy, har fairy harvester, guys, and it should just be running automatically. Uh, there we go. Yes, it is running automatically. I just opened Feed the Beast. I didn't even come and do anything here. Uh, so that is awesome, man. It is working beautifully. As you can see, we've got more than enough fertilizer, more than enough hydration cells up in that jazz. And uh, this bad boy is just ticking over nicely. Very, very awesome. Let's head into the Metalworks factory now while we wait for some cobblestone to gather um, in the recycling facility over there. And let's actually start making some of these, these blocks. I, I put the recycling facility uh, or the Metalworks factory on hold for a while just so that we could gather up like quite a few stacks of dust. And as you can see, we've got like 14, 17. Yeah, five is pretty good. Yeah, we've got about four there. Eight stacks of gold. That's good. Uh, another five stacks of uh, aluminum over there so that is pretty sweet so we'll get this bad boy up and running and uh, how much of this iron do we have from the um the fairy harvester okay and we've got 45 we've got 45 piles of iron dust from the fairy harvester so far not bad not bad could be better but uh not too shabby let's get back into the the cyber labs my friends and and let's go get all of that sweet ass cobblestone from the recycling facility what is going down bacon Damn, dude, you are excited about something. <laughs> um, I think he hasn't been fed today. That's probably why he's starving. Uh, <laughs> let's head over to the... Oh, here we go. We've already got an excess of cobblestone coming in here. So let's uh, just reset the, re the recipe over there. And now the recycling facility can get back to what it does best. And that is recycle cobblestone. Uh, I think what we should probably do also is collect a, a few stacks of torches because, man, it is still pretty dark around the fairy harvester. And when it's dark out there, bad t it's bad times for everyone. Uh, and especially bad times for my delicate machinery. So uh, let's let's pick up a stack of torches, just get that place torched up out the wazoo so that we can freaking get to work on the walls of this place. Uh, so what? Let, let, let's go back to the fairy harvester now, guys, and we can start having a little chat about the rain star. Now, I've been thinking quite... Uh, quite a lot about exactly what we're going to be doing in the rain star and oh no oh no here we go again <laughs> here we freaking go again uh creepers everywhere all up in my business um i'll deal with them in a moment let me just get all of these torches out to discourage any more freaking spawnage around here now the question that has been going around and around in my brain is the following what is the what exactly is the very first um module in the rain star going to be like, we have a lot of options, right? 
Um, if we want to sort of re replicate what we have in the cyber labs, then you're talking about like a machine room, a bio research facility, uh, a portal room, a storage room, a battery room, a power supply room, a maintenance level. Uh, there's quite a few things that we built already and that creeper is literally all over my delicate materials over there, man. Uh, my delicate machinery. That is not awesome and you dude are driving me cray cray. Yeah, that, that, that creeper is... Uh, is bad times <laughs> i think we let's just head back into the storage warehouse and pick up uh, a sword or something so that we can deal with that freaking creeper um <laughs> but guys i thought in this episode we just take it a bit easy because man we have been doing some seriously technical work on that fairy harvester my brain is uh, slightly fried so today i'm just taking it easy just um you know just just doing random stuff that i usually do off camera with you guys and giving you guys a little opportunity to see exactly what sort of work gets done around the cyber labs uh when you guys aren't with me um <laughs> and while i'm working on the cyber labs i'm usually thinking about what's next in the series what are we going to be building next and this creeper needs to freaking die get away from the computer terminal bro you are literally like all over the delicate materials oh my goodness that was so close that was that was way too close for comfort oh my my goodness my freaking heart man all right let's get, let's get some more torches up around here uh, man there, there is just so much spawnage going on there and th this is definitely not good for our mob spawner either the fact that there's so much spawnage i'm on one life i am on one life right now can i eat while i'm flying oh i can awesome <laughs> um there we go <laughs> Just when I, well, I thought that I was going to start work on the freaking walls of the fairy harvester today, but apparently not. There is a skeleton butt that needs to receive a thormium sword in his butt. Take it, you bastard. There we go. Eat it. <laughs> All right. Sweet. Oh, you are, you are kidding me. We've got two skeleton butts in there now. Messing with the fairy harvester. And this is exactly why we need to build walls, guys. This is why, because these infestations happen. And then I gotta come here and clear all of this jazz out every single day. And uh, we want this fairy harvester to be running day and night, man. These freaking mobs are messing with our 24 hour operations. Affecting profits up in here, man. <laughs> all right, there we go. So, there we go. I think, I think we're secure, guys. I think we are secure now for some nighttime work. Uh, so let's ho head over to the auto crafting table here and start making the materials that we need. We need a whole bunch of plankage. Um, that is definitely what we need. And why can't I just make all of this? Hmm, that's weird. <laughs> I have to do... Oh, I'm holding shift, that's why. I know, that doesn't actually help either. Alright, well, that should be more than enough plankage for now, I think. Alright, so what I'm going to do, guys, is literally just uh, copy the same style that we've got going for the Metalworks factory over here. Because uh, that's a that is a pretty rad design. Uh, and, and I kind of want the Ferry Harvester and the Metalworks factory to basically look the same because they are essentially a part of the same machine right and that is making a whole bunch of metal for us to build the rain star so let's also pick up a bit of glass because we're gonna we're gonna need to make those windows in there also um, and we can actually start working on this now and let's have a little chat guys what in the jazz is our very what are what are our initial plans for the rain star exactly um we are currently, if we can see up there, yes, we are currently working on the very first module of the Renstar, and there are going to be, I think it's eight, or I think it's nine modules in total, and one of these modules is roughly the size of the Cyber Labs, uh, the Cyber Labs facility, right? So, uh, basically, we are going to be expanding the Cyber Labs by like nine to ten, ten times the size of the Cyber Labs, and each of those modules is going to be responsible for one primary task. While in the Cyber Labs, uh, we sh all, all of the primary tasks are shared by the one facility. So we've got the you know we've got the bio research facility in there, we've got the power plant, the power generator, the, the batteries. All of that is in one facility. In the Renstar, each module is going to be responsible for something different, and. Uh, uh, the real question is what is the very first module going to be like what is that module over there going to be like i haven't really uh, stopped to think about it really you know i i, I made the turtle and I, i'm making blocks of, of metals and aluminium and all that sort of stuff but i haven't actually stopped to to contemplate the question what is that very first module going to be <laughs> because for example right if we made that module uh, the workshop module so we put all of our machinery and all of our like uh, 
our, our machines and our industrial furnaces and our furnaces and everything in there then how do we supply uh, that thing with power like how do we supply the machine room of the rain star with power well then logically uh, it, it, we can deduce okay so we don't make the machine room first maybe we need to make the power plant first right okay fine so let's make the power plant first but if we make the power plant first where are we going to store all the energy that is produced by like say the the nuclear reactors or whatever that we're going to build in the module um well okay fine so let's not make nu nuclear reactors instead let's make a battery room right um but then of course we hit, we hit the problem with well okay we make a battery room but then there's no power to go into the battery so we need to make a freaking energy room right <laughs> and as you can see it's it's basically like a chicken and egg scenario going on over here right like what what comes first in the rain star that, that is the question we could make a storage facility in in the rain star uh that that is what i was thinking right that maybe the first module should be a storage facility and then what we should try and do is basically transport all of the materials in the cyber labs uh, storage facility into the new rain star storage facility like that could be uh you know that that could be this like the smart thing to do first is make a storage facility but I don't know, man. I feel like that's sort of doubling up and not really achieving much considering we already have a storage facility. So I'm not like that excited about making that. The other option is to make a living quarters, to make a bedroom for ourselves. Um, but that is definitely not mission critical, right? Like you can make a bedroom anywhere. I mean, you can just make a bedroom out of a, like a square of dirt. Uh, so, you know, there's no real need for us to, to make a bedroom in the rent start at this moment in time. Plus we don't really know like, um, you know like how many employees we're going to have in the rain star like what sort of quarters do we need uh do we need like a bar do we need like a a place where people can go and hang out i don't know man like we we have we can't even think about that yet because there is no spaceship yet right uh so so yeah so this is this is kind of what i've been trying to figure out and the conclusion that i've come to is that i think we need to make the very first room of the rain star the very first module of the rain star a power uh, a battery room right like instead of using mfes which is what we currently use in the cyber labs we need to upgrade that storage to something called an mfsu i believe it's called uh yeah an mfsu and this thing holds a ridiculous amount of power right and as you can see you actually need an mfe to make an mfsu and you need lapatron crystals which require like a ridiculous amount of work to get made uh so you know we want to bait what i think we should do right is set up a whole bunch of, of mfsus in that very first module um, make it really really awesome right so like get all of those batteries set up and figure out a way how we're going to distribute that power throughout the rain star like what what is going to be the system of, of getting that power throughout the rain star what we could do is is make a, a huge network of glass fiber cabling right that's what we could do um but we could also use i believe a tesseract to to send power i think there's actually uh i th i think yes an energy tesseract i think you actually are able to send energy via a tesseract and therefore we don't need to have like ridiculously long lengths of glass fiber cable what we could have is tesseracts in the battery room uh, that link up to tesseracts throughout the other modules in the ren star and then there would only be um like networks of glass fiber cabling within the modules themselves right so each module would have like a primary energy tesseract and from that tesseract tesseract would flow all of the glass fiber cables that would be powering all of the jazz uh, in that particular module so it kind of makes sense to me to make this battery room first and what we could actually do is create a uh, an energy tesseract to test it out and we could connect that energy tesseract to the the battery room in the cyber labs and we could actually charge our new mfses uh from the the uh, the battery room in the cyber labs and so when we start working on the other modules of the ren star our mfef mfses will be fully charged and ready to go because we've already charged them up from the cyber labs and we you know we don't we then don't uh, end up with that like chicken and egg scenario where we have mfes but we don't have a power supply uh, to charge them because they would have already been charged by the cyber labs so that's kind of what i'm thinking right i like the progression that i'm thinking for the cyber labs is to start with the the the, the battery room so basically like the power source of the entire spaceship 
and then to work on the machine room or the machine module and because basically if we're going to be making a nuclear generator which is exactly what we are going to make uh, <laughs> a nuclear generator requires like a ridiculous amount of other machines to create so it kind of makes sense to start like with this battery room get the batteries fully charged up then make the machine room that is going to make all of the stuff that we need to make nuclear reactors we can then make the actual power plant module and that power plant module will, will be linked up to the first module that we built which is of course the power supply module and basically our spaceship will then be ready uh, for service because it will have a power supply it will have a battery room it will have a workshop and then, and then after that, we can fill in all the blanks. We can make the storage warehouse uh, module, you know, like a module dedicated to storage. And then we can, once that is done, once the storage warehouse is done, we can get the Renstar doing what it is meant to be doing. And that is, of course, sucking all the resources out of this freaking planet. Uh, because, you know, we obviously can't start harvesting this planet until we have somewhere to store all of the materials. So once the storage uh, module in the Renstar is done, we can actually start with the process of freaking sucking this planet dry of its resources and then after that we can start working on like the aesthetic stuff like making a living quarters um, making like a bio research area like a biodome or something like that um, so so that's that was actually a really good brainstorm man <laughs> I think I think that's pretty much how I wanted to go I think we should start with battery room then go to power plant then go to machine room no no other way around so we start with battery room then go to machine or battery module rather then go to machine module then go to power generating module then go to storage module then go to suck planet dry of resources module and then go to like living quarters module and like social modules and all of that sort of stuff so yeah that's a, that sounds like a pretty good plan to me guys like let me know what you guys think in the comment section below uh, about the order in which we should be constructing the Renstar. what do you guys think is the most important module that we should be building first in that bad boy let me know man i'm going to keep my eyeballs close on the comments of this video uh because this week we're going to start working on the Renstar, man and it is going to be freaking sweet so we need to make a decision quick cyber diggity dogs because uh, probably in the next couple of videos or so, we are literally going to be start working on the very first module. And whatever we choose to be, uh, whatever we choose that module to be is going to be what it becomes. And we definitely don't want to make the wrong decision and like live to regret it later on. Like, you know, 20 episodes from now, we're like, man, why did we make the power plant module first? We're such noobs. Um, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure with our brain power and our logic combined, we'll be able to, to make that decision quite well, guys. So, uh, Get freaking typing, man. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section below, guys. Um, but this is looking, starting to look pretty sweet over here, guys. I really love these really massive window, this like massive window effect that we get uh, from this design. And it's such a like a simple design, really. Um, I absolutely love it. <laughs> I, I did this for the, the Metalworks factory off camera. I kind of got lost in it and uh, forgot to record it. But I thought I'd do a little bit of it with you guys so you guys can see exactly how it, um, you know, how it, how to do it really <laughs> uh, but there we go that's actually looking really really awesome let's head up here to have a look yeah check it that man and that's going to keep all of those freaking creepers and scalar butts and, and zombies out of my freaking fairy harvester when it's when it's doing its business 24 hours a day and uh, that's looking awesome man check it that and i think what i mean we're going to have to put through like we're going to have to put a transparent roof on here right so that the the um the, the solar panels can still get energy so we'll, we'll literally have maybe just like a really really gentle dome of a glass roof over here basically like this but out of glass right out of glass slabs um which i think will look pretty freaking rad man oh yes <laughs> actually that will look awesome um, but I guess there's only one last thing to do, guys, in this episode, and that is to just go back down to those quarries to see if they they are actually quarrifying yet. I'm pretty, I'm quite curious. I'm, I'm sure you guys are curious too. Let's have a look. Can we see from here? All right. So that one's definitely not ready yet. Um, so we'll leave that one to go a little bit longer. But maybe this one is done. Come on, baby. Let's have a look. No, it looks like, well, that, I think that one is pretty close. I think, yeah, that, that one's only got one more layer to go. Uh, and then it's going to start quarrifying. So that is awesome. One or two more layers to go over there. Awesome, man. And this quarry is going to suck up all of these mobs also. Um, <laughs> they got, they're about to have a really bad time, man. They're about to be, be reprocessed by a recycling facility, man. <laughs> Not a pretty way to go, let me tell you. 
But anyway, guys, that I think I'm going to end the episode here. That was a pretty good brainstorming session. Uh, I'm glad to have gotten that all off my chest to think about it, to talk about it with you guys. And I really look forward to uh, getting your guys' feedback in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think is the correct order for the construction of modules in the Rainstorm, man. I'm looking forward to your feedback, guys. And thank you so much for watching this very relaxed and very chilled crafting episode of Let's Play Feed the Beast. If you enjoyed it, you hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, you hit that subscribe button. And this has been Ren Diggity Dog, feeding the freaking beast. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video, my friends. Goodbye!